Like we've seen him deliver in, in these huge spots, right. and, and we're inclined it's to give because, him the benefit But Josh of the doubt. Allen has delivered as well. Right. right. So it's right. because like of the wins, and it's because of the, and it's because of the track record. Yeah. So like that's yeah. not something that we associated with Dak Prescott or Jalen Hurts. Hurts historically. That's always been something that we've associated yeah. with Josh Allen. Right. So when it pops up, then it's that issue. Th- there's also this. I, I just went back to make sure I'm reading the numbers exactly correctly. As there was a moment in time in the season when we were talking about A.J. Brown as the league MVP. Yes, yes, he had five consecutive games where he had at least 125 receiving, or one, two, three, four, five, right. six games mm. in a row where he had at least 125 receiving yards. Since then, 66, 8, 37, 56 last night. So that has shut down, whether it's defenses adjusting or whatever it is. Why has that all of a sudden run dry? Yeah, I don't know. I wish I had the answer, and I'm sure that A.J. Brown uh, is making people aware of their correlation between him getting the ball and their offense being outstanding. They have a lot of really great weapons, and I think a part of managing a team and part of being a quarterback is making sure you keep everyone happy, but I think they're at a point now where no one cares about anyone's feelings. They just want to win, so if it's throwing up to A.J. Brown, I'm sure they'll do it next week. Yeah, I think, and that's, that gets back to how this conversation started, right? He's going to say we're not committed enough. He doesn't care if his teammates are upset that he yeah. says that. He yeah. doesn't care if we talk about it, right? Like, he needs to, to, to jolt he, them he missed, somehow. He misses Shane Steichen in a big way. Yeah. And the way they ran their offense last year, I'm just telling you, he misses, he misses that comfort level, the RPOs. You watch what he's doing with Gardner Minshew and Pittman, the guys in Indianapolis. I'm telling you, that is a major loss. And it does, to your point, it does help your defense on third downs close with sacks and pressures because you're playing with this lead that they don't have the opportunity to play with nearly as much right now. Games are much tighter. That's a huge loss that has shown up and just kind of undervalued. So the bottom line, let's just go into a crystal ball kind of situation here. They've got three games left. Again, two of them are against the Giants and one is against Arizona. Those are games they should win. For sure. If they do that, they will be the two seed, we would assume, in the NFC, barring San Francisco going on a – an unforeseen losing streak. They'll be the two seed. They'll get some home games. They'll they'll hopefully have had, you know, those three weeks to get things right. Do you see the Eagles as a legitimate Super Bowl contender? Will they look like that by the time the season ends? I do. I'd say NFC contender. Running through San Francisco right now is going to be tough. Well, but, I, but they're, yeah. they're going to be in that mix. Well, look, when you were in the Super Bowl last year, getting to the conference championship game is not a success. Are they, are, are they are they any threat to San Francisco at all? Ooh, uh, not at this point. I, I mean, I wouldn't bet on them, but I think they absolutely are a threat. That's the thing about football is they are good enough, they're a talented enough team to beat San Francisco one weekend. Uh, are they a talented enough team to win three weekends in a row? That's a they better point. hope for injuries on San Fran because they don't match up. The other thing is you're assuming they win the division. How long has it been since the same uh, team oh, won the oh, NFC? Oh, here we go. 19 years, 19 years, Dan. Years. It's going to end this year. Something weird Eagles always happens. Year. Something, there are Tommy. dark forces at work Tommy. here. Tommy DeVito is the man in charge of that at this point. And as you point out, Nick, <laughs> they are rooting for him <laughs> deep in the really. heart of Texas. We didn't execute. Um, I don't think we were, we're, uh, we're uh, committed enough. You know, you know, just just got to turn it around. You know, um, you know, it's a challenge that we have to embrace. Just continue to see it through. All right, we'll point out he's been sick all week, and you can see he doesn't seem himself there. He right. doesn't have any energy at all, and you give him all the credit in the world for trying his best to tough it out. But the bottom line is, if the quarterback says we're not committed enough, people are going to react to that. How should we react to that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's him trying to send a message to his team. It's a, this team is desperate. We saw that last night through the evidence, or we saw it last week, through the evidence of them deciding to change defensive coordinators. Last night, they had a sick quarterback who has a bad knee, and they kept doing design runs for him. They're looking for any answer, and I think that you could see that in the press conference. A three-game losing streak in the NFL is long, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, you're going basically a month without winning a game, and, yeah. and that, that gets rough. So I do think there's something to be said for that because he says not committed enough, and then he kind of looks up like, like, yeah, you heard that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, he is talking to the rest of his team. Right. And let, let's get our, our act in gear here because, you know, we have three more games and we got to get this division one and get to the playoffs. So I think there's something to that. But they have issues that are coming to the surface that have kind of been there all year. Yep. Right? Especially on the defensive side of the ball, but the offense isn't scoring either. So, yeah, it's time to lock in. Fortunately for them, the schedule does take a little bit of a turn in their favor. Yeah, unless we are believers in the Tommy DeVito phenomenon, because the bottom line of it is this. Let me explain for those of you who wake up and you hear, well, the Cowboys are now in first place in the NFC East, which they are. 
but it is actually the Eagles who control their own destiny in that division. Should the Eagles win out, should both teams win out, then the Eagles would win the division. It's a long, complicated explanation that requires like the literally the sixth tiebreaker. But for all intents and purposes, yeah. that's the way this thing goes. So if they win out, they get there. The problem, Jeff, is when you live by the, by the skin of your teeth, yeah. Yeah. eventually yeah. that turns yeah. on you. The law yeah. of averages works against you. Last year, nobody got hurt. This year, they got a ton of injuries. Last year, their defense, stability. This year, all this turnover, co coordinators change. Last year, the quarterback never turned it over. Now they turn it over. All the little margins. Why, why do you make it no, that face? Just, what are you I, doing? No, I'm just imagining all the, like, Texas Cowboys. Cowboys fans with cowboy hats on rooting for Tommy DeVito. Yeah. I just, the, the combination <laughs> yeah. of those two worlds makes, makes has distracted me. I can no longer pay attention or take any of this seriously because now all of Texas, all Dallas Cowboys fans are big Tommy DeVito fans. I cannot wait for cowboy hats and knees fingers gonna all mess, together. They're going to mess this gonna, up, though. Oh, oh. They're, they're going to do it wrong. And, they, and you <laughs> think they care? Like, oh, it's going to be great. I'm sorry to distract you. No, show. that's okay. I've seen it once in, in the past, actually. Actually, uh, John Travolta was an urban cowboy, and that was maybe the most ridiculous casting decision in the history of Hollywood. But I digress. Let me come back to my original uh. point. You are not what your record says you are on the NFL. You are what your point differential says you are. Mm. The Eagles' point differential is plus 18. That is not where the elite teams in the NFL live. So I give them credit for finding ways to win close games because they are well coached, because yeah. their quarterback is exceptional, because generally speaking, they know what they're doing. But they don't dominate people the way the better teams in the NFL generally do. And that means eventually the ball is going to bounce in the other direction. A call is going to go in the other direction and that's where the Eagles have lived all season long Jeff and now it's catching up I to them. I agree to to a some level but I would say this team has beaten some really good football mm -hmm. teams so it's not this is a team that's played a number one schedule they just came off a uh, loss at the Super Bowl so they they played all the best right and now they're going to get to the easy part of their schedule so hopefully they get these get right games but but they have found ways to beat good teams they but last night they found ways to lose right and you talked about like Hurts talking about, hey, we're not committed. Well, well, guess what, right? Like, you got to get committed as well. 17, little things like this, right? They're up 7 nothing. This should be, it's going to be a tush push. It's going to be an easy conversion. Kelsey moves the ball forward. He knows he was wrong for it. Gets called. It's a legit call. It's a lot of. Is that a legit? I think a 100%. lot of people, you, you were a center, so you were the perfect person to ask that to. Jason Kelsey is going to the Hall of Fame. He knows Absolutely. what he's allowed to do. Yeah. So you're telling me that he moved that ball forward too much? Yeah, exactly. So you do it. You do it quite a bit, actually, especially when you're on the road. You'll take the ball, and, and you see where the ball is spotted, and you take him, and he moves it all the way to the line. So you're gaining a half a yard, three-quarters of a yard, whatever it is, right? Because when you stand over it, you can kind of move it forward with some gray area. The problem is all these things, like happened with the Chiefs a couple weeks ago, you're seeing these calls are, are a lot tighter, and especially with all the attention on the tush push and nobody stopping it, everybody's watching, paying attention, and he got caught, and it, it's, it's a legit call. Let me make another point here. I think I heard someone say, and that someone was me, <laughs> that Jalen Hurts now shares the league lead, or we shouldn't call it that because it's not a statistic that anyone wants to be leading in, in turning the ball over. Mm. When Dak Prescott was in that position a year ago, we didn't say, well, that's a blip or it's bad luck. People were all over Dak Prescott. Should people react the same way? No, people like me and Dan Graziano last year said, chill out. This is an aberration for yeah. Dak Prescott. And I think I would say the same thing about Jalen Hurts. There are some turnovers that pop into my mind that seem like bad decisions. But by and large, I think turnovers fluctuate a bit on luck. You could have some seasons where you have three or four more because the DBs were on the jugs machine earlier in the week and they kept them, and then some seasons where you have a few less because the fumbles bounce back into your old yeah. lineman's hands. So I don't think that Jalen Hurts is the problem with this team. He is all that's right with that offense. Don't you think turnovers could also be a symptom of a bigger problem, right? If the offense is struggling, right. like if the operation's not as smooth as it was last year, that maybe that maybe is so, he trying I mean, to do too much? Yeah, like last, year, last year, the fourth quarters of most games, yeah. they were just trying yeah. to kill the clock. Exactly. In the fourth quarters of these games, they're trying to get after, so they're taking more chances. So yeah, I think this is all goes back to the point differential point that Greeny was making earlier in the show is when you have a tight point differential you're going to put yourself in these situations yeah. where things can go wrong and 
I mean, they're not good enough. So, like, if you have a penalty or a turnover in a game that you're up by two touchdowns at the end, it yeah. doesn't matter as much as when you're in. But when you don't play in those games, this is what I will say, and I will agree with Greeny on this. Uh -huh. If Josh Allen had done this, alarm bells are going off, yeah. right? And it doesn't matter that you're asking him to do a lot because you're asking the same thing from Jalen Hurts that you are from, from Josh Allen. So, he, he has not – the alarm bells have not gone off nearly as much in Philly, but because of the wins.